Hey kids, it's Trusted James, and on this Trusted James Explains, we're looking at Ceratosaurus. Same rules apply, older models, newer models here. We're gonna start off with this one right here. The, your first Ceratosaurus experience will be this guy, or one like it, a uh, little tiny figure, kind of like the uh, the 8-pack, 10-pack dinosaur toys. He has this little crescent horn on his nose, which is actually where the name comes from. Ceratosaurus means horn lizard. Here's the big deal. Uh, Triceratops was discovered in 1889. That's the first of the Ceratopsian, or, or official horn dinosaur lineage, uh, this guy is actually the first dinosaur ever found with horns, period. Again, it was first described in 19, sorry, 1884 by Charles Marsh and was re-described again in 1920 by Charles Gilmore. And yes, Gilmore of the Gilmore Girls. Is that cool? No, I'm kidding. That's not a thing. Don't remember that part. That's a joke. But the point is, the idea is that it was re-evaluated because Marsh and Cope's finds and other bone wars were always needed to be re-evaluated just in general because they were competing and finding things so fast. There's a whole thing there. But anyway, this guy here is uniquely, uh, it's funny because most predator dinosaurs have three fingers or four, four limb digits. Uh, this guy has three, but the real animal had four. So that's kind of wrong there. There's three toes going forward and dew claw, no dew claw on the back. And the tail in general is the tripod, you know, as you see in Allosaurus, T-Rex, Doug Bills, that tripod stance for the figure itself, kind of an engineering thing. Um, ironically, with Stratosaurus, its tail was so large, or at least it was very crocodilian-like, that it was thought to live in water, actually by Marsh first, and then Dr. Bopper brought the idea back and made it kind of bigger. Anyway, so my first experience with Ceratosaurus was the Safari 1996. Now, the Safari, the brand. Now, before eBay, or before I knew about eBay, I'm not sure when it started, um, I would go to teacher supply stores as a kid, and they would have these more accurate models. And what's cool is that when I first found it, I had no idea what Ceratosaurus was. I mean, I saw it in a few books, but I really didn't register it much. But the idea that it had uh, four fingers, and it has three toes going forward, and the cool thing about this guy too is that, um, I mean, the tail is not perfect, but it's also kind of used slightly for balancing. And you know, as you see, you know, well, let's do it there. It's still using it for balance. I get that engineering wise, but it had the horn on the nose that you right here. And that's the main thing is that I say horn, not full horns, more like crest. Uh, uh, but the idea is that these features here are for, we think for nification now. Initially, Marsh thought they were fighting. And actually, Marsh and Gilmore thought they were for fighting, the, the nose horn. But in general, they have three here, kind of a, a cool feature there. So, I mean, in some other world, it could have been called Triceratops too, three horn face, but it's really crest face, whatever. Um, again, the figure hit makes the point. Now, I went to a, I think it was Dollar General back in 1998, and he had this guy here. And what's really cool is that it had the nose horn, the two crests of the eye. The hand had three fingers, which is weird that they went backwards, but I, you know, they don't consult people in paleontology, I assume. Um, three toes in the front, no dew claw. Now this roll of spines are uh, spikes are very cool because uh, many predatory dinosaurs have little bumps in their back or spines. Now it's usually the 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 artist or, or recreation person trying to like just making it cooler. But Ceratosaurus actually has osteoderms in the back, and osteoderms mean bone and skin. It's like crocodile plates, but theirs were slightly different. So when you see that on all, all these figures, that's actually a true trait that we know they had. It's kind of cool the thing there. Uh, this imperial the imperial company which. Um, I, it's 1999, I believe. They're in the last century, still kids. Uh, this one is neat because it has four fingers, it has a nose horn, but instead of having a two over the eye, it just has one in the middle. And that's kind of weird. I don't know, like, I mean, I, I guess it's like a way of a manufacturing thing, but that's the other, you know, why go backwards, right? But the main thing with the body overall, yeah, the tail is being used like a kangaroo tail, you know, for tripod stance, but uh, this body plan is also used for the Parasaurolophus of this group. So it's not a sense of carnivores and herbivores, like carnivores having more tight muscular bodies and herbivores being bigger for fermentation or whatever. This guy is a general body for, to get an animal for that, that company. So that was kind of unfortunate. The next one I have, I don't know, I keep, there's no record of the company. I keep doing this search for it. But in general, it, it's neat because on the one hand, it hits some, it has a nose horn, it has an osteoderms. Um, it has three fingers, not four. That's a problem. And there is a dew claw and there's three toes going forward. The tail's smaller. And the big deal to tail thing, like, like I said before, is that uh, Marsh thought that it was using it in the water, like a crocodile, because it's living on the large predators, maybe that was more of its niche. Not saying it wouldn't eat like red meat or land dinosaurs, but eating water, fish, you know, that's really important. Plus, um, you know, so it's, it's a view of the ecology very different, which we're gonna do ecology later on. This next figure here is from, I think, like Walmart and dollar stores. And this one has a nose thorn, no, no crest, over the eye. It has four fingers, that's really cool. And these bumps in the back, pretty nice. The tail's pretty thick. The first toes, the first three toes going forward, uh, sorry, second, third, and fourth toe going forward, the dew claw going back. Um, overall, it's a pretty cool figure. 
what was very upsetting about this one for me personally was the name on it was Over Rapture. And this particular company, they've corrected it since then when I see them in stores. Uh, but in generally, they, they had like half the toys with the wrong name on them. And if you ever see Over Rapture, it's like not that. Even if you make it bulky and old school, it's not. This is a Stratosaurus through and through, no question asked. But that was something that was kind of weird to me. But overall, it's a decent figure. Uh, and then we have like the mid 2000s, and I get like the pack of 12 from like Toys R Us or whatever. These kind of guys here. And um, again, that's a nose horn, three of two of the eyes, the ostrich on the back. Uh, there's three fingers, that's unfortunate, and only three toes, no dew claw. But you get that it's a Thratosaurus. So for me, as a toy person, I mean, I prefer them being more accurate, even for their time, but just like you get the point, you know. And it's not mislabeled. Uh, 2012, I believe, Safari comes back and has this guy here. Uh, this is my like example of Ceratosaurus toy wise. I, I love them all, they're all my children, but this guy here is my, my favorite, favorite to use. In fact, I'm gonna put a link uh, below to show different Thoropod groups. And this is the one I use for the image for Thoropods because it's just, to me, it, it hits all the marks. It has the three fingers. Um, many cases when dinosaurs have the, you know, pretro dinosaurs, Thoropods have three fingers like this. Not like raptors, like Jurassic Park, it's their palm to palm. Um, the earlier ones, like uh, Dilophosaurus, Dilophysis, Carlophosaurus, we had a fourth digit, but many times with fourth digit, they have a claw in it. And this one shows that feature there. Although I'm not sure if Stratosaurus had a claw in the fourth or not. If it did, it's really unique. But in general, they're kind of copying that there. Uh, the three toes in the front, uh, do claw in the back. One thing to point out these figures too, which is more forgivable because it's engineering, the toes and feet may be made bigger or smaller to make them stand better or balance. Uh, we don't know if the toes would have spread out like that in real life. Uh, but the idea is that that's something to me, it's like slightly forgivable because it's forgivable because it's in engineering for the toy to stand properly and not drag the tail, I get that. But it's not, you know, it's, you know, to me it's like, it's as good as you can get. Don't get too snippy. And of course, Ostradarms on the back, super cool. Uh, then there was a lull and in 2015, Jurassic World came out and I was super excited because when Jurassic Park came out, there's all these toys in all the stores, right? Something in Jurassic World would be another wave of this. And uh, uh, they didn't do that. Uh, they only had a few figures. Most of the figures were like the um, genetic splice, chaos theory looking stuff. So I only bought like three or four of them. And one of them was this Stratosaurus here. Now I liked it because the tail was pretty thick. You had the belt in the back. There's the nose horn, the two crests there. The importance of this animal for Jurassic World was if you didn't know in Jurassic Park 3, when the Kirby's and Dr. Grant are looking through the Spinosaurus poop for the phone, um, an animal walks out of the forest, looks at them, sniffs, looks kind of weird and walks off. That was a Stratosaurus. Ironically enough, it didn't really have big obvious horns on his, on his nose, but on the eye, over the eye, sorry, I shouldn't say horn, they're actually bridges or, um, you know, the, uh, we have our nasal and our eye, and for dinosaurs, they have the uh, anterior finasteral hole between the eye and nose, and over that ridge of bone is where the crest comes from, uh, finalosaurus and you guys too. But he yeah, has three, four fingers. Uh, I, I've always been a complainer about the open wound dino damage. I know dino damage for Jurassic Park 1 where the skin comes off, and part two, that's like a trademark thing. But in part three and beyond, they just like leave an open wound until the new ones come out. And that just was really weird to me. I don't know. I never like, I, I know some kids like, this is awesome. But like to me, it was like, eh, open wounds don't seem like a good thing for an animal in the forest or a jungle world complains. Um, anyway, so I'm going to Target one day and I see a company called Baton, B-A-T-T-A-T. B -A -T -T -A -T, uh, and they have this guy here. And what's really cool about this one is that it has the four fingers, it has the three. It's pretty accurate. And Dosciderm tells pretty decent. Um, no sore and crest. I'm really impressed by this guy. Uh, also, you can't quite see it, but I wouldn't surprise him. I would be surprised if anyone did it. Is that uh, Ceratosaurus had really long teeth, so long that you know you have the, your your top jaw, and lower jaw, but they came out of the upper jaw and they went past the lower jaw, and that's something that's really unique, which also implies something with their feeding techniques that's really unique there. Uh, no toy does that, and if they did, I'd be really surprised. But this one comes the closest, so I'm really proud of that. All those mouths is closed too, so when you see that, see that feature. Most of them have open mouths, and the ones that are closed are just kind of generic theropod design, whichever that, I say generic theropod, there's no such thing as generic theropod, they're all unique groups. And again, the link below will show that. Uh, then Tara said, we want more of your money, so they made a bigger version at Roared, and it's the same exact design, it's just big hard plastic with, a, with the slits in it for the noise to come out. But the tail being thicker, it should be longer, but it being thicker is pretty cool. The feet are made more packed for standing. Four toes, nose crisp. I'm pretty okay with this. This is pretty good. Uh, then I go into the, uh, the gift shop and I see a Ceratosaurus like this. And this guy has nose or a bright like this. And one thing to point out is that there are three recognized species of Ceratosaurus. One in North America, which I'm focused mainly on here. 
uh, Portugal and Tanzania, which is East, Central Eastern Africa. And for me, if you were trying to do some kind of diorama work or species work, I would look at this as being a different species of Ceratosaurus, not so much that there's, or, but some scientists argue that the different looks of each one could not be different species, but instead be individuals with different features. The one North, in North America first found uh, was thought to be a juvenile, basically. So, it, it, well, it's not fully grown. It was like 18 feet long, and it probably wasn't um, fully grown yet. So, and then the one, I think, I think Africa, Portugal, one of the two, the crest wasn't quite preserved well, so we don't know how it fully looks. So, there's a question about that too, actually. But anyway, this guy had an enlarged tail. That was really good. Uh, of course, if you can't bounce on your tail, bounce on your hands. The arms weren't that long. But overall, they're getting the point across. I don't. I think that was they're too muscular, in my opinion, and then the legs too short, actually, uh, in my opinion. But anyway, so then Jurassic World uh, two comes out or Fallen Kingdom, and I remember uh, in my brain I had solidified this red Stratosaurus image, and I remember seeing like this toy for sale and thinking, oh, I want that one, and then like it was only at Target or something. So I saw this one at Walmart and I missed this. So I bought this one thing. Okay, so I got one Ceratosaurus. Uh, the first thing to point out with this guy is that the tail is, again, too wimpy and wiry. I would like to see them, like, you know, thicker tails. Uh, the legs are pretty stout. Uh, they're very narrow in the toes, which actually matches more with the footprints in, uh, of other dinosaurs, not so much Ceratosaurus. Um, three fingered hands, nose, horn, eye crest. So it's hitting the major part marks. Of course, as you may know my stories, my wife found out that I wanted a different one, so she got that one too, so now I have these two. And as a kid, I would have like used this as sexual dimorphism, showing that many animals sexual, the, you know, uh, in dinosaurs, you have boy or girl, morph form, uh, and the idea that males and females look different from species. So, and because dinosaurs are like birds, I would say that dinosaur, the dinosaurs, would, this would be the male, if I were a kid, you know. But not a rule, don't, you know, do your own thing. Uh, finally, I have my newest Ratosaurus here, which uh, came from the Camp Cretaceous series, which is ironic because I love the fact that the Jurassic World post Fallen Kingdom has just been coming out with toys continually, just new figures, new things, which is, you know. But this is my newest figure here. So, what we're going to do now is the, un the part I promised, the unboxing part, because obviously, so I just got this new figure, and we're going to go through. I love how some of them don't stand. Thermopod standing are always an issue uh, for me personally. I don't know, it's just really important. Yeah, look at that. Okay, all of you just lean into each other. You're, you're, to be in that, there are suggestions that they may have been pack hunters, or at least they've been in groups. Um, but I'll cover that more in the ecology. So here's our Ceratosaurus from Camp Cretaceous, and here are my official Jurassic Game scissors, you know, like that. And it's actually super easy to undo them. And, oh, wait for it. Don't cut it. <laughs> oh, it goes sideways. Let's see. And again, the number one reason the tails are always different sizes or too small, just because of why they're needed for the need practice or something, right? So, I'm going to pull it out. Okay. And there's the tail. And it simply plugs in. Oh, there's a neural, the, the osteoderm, so it plugs in like that. So again, you get your genera, looks like this. So, just like our earlier, got actually smaller. Oh, about the same size, okay. Um, the tail should be a little thicker, more like a crocodile, but whatever. Uh, nose horn right here, two crests of the eye. If you go up, it roars. It roars more. The third level. So let's, let's review that again. It goes one, two, three. You can skip two, okay. Anyway, sorry, I just opened it, I have no idea. Uh, four fingers, three toes going forward, and a dupe on the side. Overall, you know, good, pretty good figure like that. So, let's look at the ecology. Uh, or first is family. Let's look, look at that first. So, who was Stratosaurus related to? Well, uh, it's kind of a, you know, we have the Allosaurus, is it one group? We have the Spinosaurus, we have the Megalosaurus, all, all these different groups. Um, the closest relatives of Stratosaurus are, or one of the closest relatives are the Abelosaurus. So, Stratosaurus lived in late Jurassic North America. Portugal and Tanzania. Uh, and Cretaceous, late to mid Cretaceous, uh, South America, Africa, and so on, we have Abelosaurus. The most famous of those guys are it's a, the Carnotaurus. This is the one from uh, Made Famous by Disney Dinosaur. Uh, and like I said, let's see. You can kind of, I mean, okay, so officially speaking, you can see why. They both have like the four finger design, although their fingers are way smaller, uh, their arms are way smaller. 
Um, they have, you know, they have horns on their head. In Madagascar, they have Majungasaurus. I think I've done a video already of that one. So these guys are Abelosaurus. So they're related to the Ceratosaurus, and many think the Ceratosaurus evolved into them. Um, they're in the right place, right time, right features. It's not slow flight belief. It's just looking at their features and measuring bones. We're like, this is closely, you know, like Mar you are the father kind of thing. Uh, it was tough to see the physoids where, you know, um, in dinosaurs, there's uh, Tanarans are the ones with like those dip tails. These guys are outside of that group. So that's the, like the Allosaurus and the Solarosaurus of the feathers. They're all in one branch and they branch off more, but they've since then removed the Coelophysis from that from that group. Um, so mainly see a Bellosaurus, Ceratosaurus related to Bellosaurus. And there are a few other Ceratosaurus group species, but Ceratosaurus itself being the first or the largest of the group, it's the most well known of the family. Now, as far as now beyond that, we have the ecology. Now, the North American ecology is my favorite. It's called the Morphin Formation. So Ceratosaurus is known to deal with Allosaurus. Now, Allosaurus um, is the most abundant predator in late Jurassic North America. Ceratosaurus is very rare fossilized. That doesn't mean necessarily that Ceratosaurus was rare in the ecology. It just means that it could, it could have fossilized less different environment that we don't know. But their neighbors would have been uh, let's see, uh, Brachiosaurus, Apatosaurus, Diplodocus, Camarasaurus, Stegosaurus, and uh, Camposaurus, sorry, and many other small um, plant-eating dinosaurs. So this is the North American group. And there's more animals in this. Uh, they just, these are some of the most famous toys. I mean, there's like every other year is a new Brachiosaurus or Diplodocus, something like that. Very few camera sources, which is ironic because camera source is the most abundant long neck at that time period. But there's only like two or three models of it I have ever found. Anyway, uh, so these guys are all contemporaries. Plus, uh, there's an animal called Torphosaurus, which is a Megalosaur relative that's bigger than the Malosaurus, which are super rare in the environment, according to the, you know, what we find. But um, in many ways, people kind of look at like, I've heard, you know, seen this mentality of like, Allosaurus like this line of Jurassic and Stratosaurus is like this, like the hyenas or leopards, something like that. Um, again, we don't have very many of them to compare them to Allosaurus. There's so many Allosaurus skeletons. And, but the thing is, they, uh, if you see, you know, if you, if you were recreated as ecology, these are your main players. So we find fossils of all of them together in the same spot. Uh, it could have been the Allosaurus hunted larger prey, Stratosaurus smaller prey. Um, you know, where we see injuries on Allosaurus from Stegosaurus and stuff. We don't really see that in the Stratosaurus skeletons we have. Although one was found with metatarsals of foot bones that were two of them were fused together, so actually an injury there. Um, but you know you can't you could have just tripped. We don't you know we don't know that. Um, but that's the North American uh, uh, neighborhood. And plus, again, if Torphosaurus and Allosaurus are there, and this guy has a big tail and he can probably swim and they're from the water, have really big teeth, that could be a different ecology for it that uh, these got the other predators don't don't hold. Um, in Africa or Tanzania in particular, we have now again this is a Brachiosaurus model, but as history has showed you. Uh, Brachios Giraffe Titan was discovered, Brachiosaurus was discovered, they thought they were the same species for a long time, they're not again, so, you know, same body plan. The Stegosaur from uh, um, um, Africa is called uh, Kentrosaurus, this guy here, I think I did a video on that one too, actually. And, of course, we have a little, a little bitty a Pterosaur called Ranthorhynchus. So these guys are the um, Tanzanian group. Uh, there are also other sauropods found, there aren't toys of them. And, fun fact, the Ceratosaurus species in Tanzania seems to be bigger than the one in North America. Um, again, North American species being a juvenile, so we're estimating his size was even like 18 feet, but the adult may have been 27 feet. The one in Africa seems to be even bigger than that, so that implies something else. Said, well, what, what if there are no allosaurus in Africa so they get bigger to replace? We don't know that because we do see allosaurus-like remains there. Not allosaurus itself, but something in that family group. Uh, so anyway, so that's this ecology there. Now, that being said, that's the general overview of Ceratosaurus. There's way more to it, of course. But here we've been over the different figures, uh, its relatives, and its neighbors. That being said, thank you very much. I'll see you guys later.